Hi, I'm Tracy, VE3TWM. Thank you for tuning in to Outdoors on the Air. A few years back, after ICOM introduced their groundbreaking new QRP transceiver, the IC705, I published a video stating the reasons why I wouldn't be purchasing one, and for a few years I held steadfast. But something changed, and in this video I'm going to tell you why I recently purchased an IC705. But first, let me make a few points regarding that initial video. By the time I posted why I won't buy an ICOM IC705, I'd seen quite a few fanboy videos extolling the 705's features, and even a few whose thumbnail teased a real critique of the radio, but in actuality were enthusiastic endorsements. When I published my video, I laid out my actual case for not buying a 705 in logical terms based on my own personal perspective. My video was an outlier, to say the least. I took a lot of flack from both fanboys offended that someone dare critique their electromagnetic darling, and hams who put forward reasonable arguments. In my original video, I assessed the suitability of the 705 based upon my own use case. To very quickly recap, I am an SSB-only operator who would stand to gain nothing from the 705's strong digital modes capability. I've never used a field rig with a spectrum scope, and never missed the capability. Further, the 705's impressive DSP noise and bandwidth filtering were not something I felt I needed to successfully operate from the field. And finally, while I felt strongly that the radio moved the goalposts for portable performance, I did not understand why anyone would pay the high price affixed to ICOM's new QRP champion. Once I posted the video, the onslaught came hard and fast. The negative comments I received on that video ranged from insulting to entertaining. Many were informative, however. Here's a few. Marvin Hansen, 6942, wrote, Title should be Why I'm Going to Miss Out on Such a Great Radio. Richard Smith, 5001, You can't take it with you. Just get one. The audio coming out of these radios is amazing, even noticeable on FM. Go on, treat yourself. In addition to these comments, I also heard from other articulate hams who built a strong case for buying a 705. Reading through all of them gave me a chance to reconsider my perspective. However, as I stated in the video, while I liked the new model, I had decided to wait. My strategy was to hold off until disgruntled early adopters became frustrated and put their rigs on the used market, at which time I would snap one up. Well, here we are, three years beyond the release of the 705, and while ICOM seems to be selling quite a few of them, I have seen very few show up for resale. In addition, the pricing of the IC705 has remained high. There's been no dollar drop as the model has matured into the ham rig landscape. So the rig is still expensive, and I currently have no need for many of its features. Why then did I change my mind and buy a brand new one? A few reasons lay behind my decision to take the plunge into the deep end. In early 2023, I was getting burned out by ham radio and my YouTube channel. I was faced with a choice drop out or try a radical change. I did consider giving up the hobby, or at least my YouTube channel, and for a few months I didn't publish any videos. But then I started to think about giving myself a fresh start. What if I sold my collection of portable radios and tried something very different than I had ever used before? It would be a big step, since I had significant emotional attachment to my Yesu FT817, my FT897, and to a lesser degree, my FT891. But those radios wouldn't be doing me any good sitting in storage in my basement. Another perspective I pondered was one that had been positioned to me by a viewer. My passion is portable radio, so why wouldn't I want to try what is arguably the best QRP radio ever produced? I might not need most of the technology built into the IC705, but it would be there waiting for me if I ever decided to try expanding my activity into the digital realm. And then I had a revelation. 
My all-time favorite radio is my Yesu FT817. I remember lusting after it when it was first introduced, but like the IC705, was blown away by its high price. It wasn't until many years later that I took a deep breath, reached for my wallet, and purchased an 817. So I tried a mental exercise. I took the initial sale price of the FT817 in the year 2000, the year it was introduced, and adjusted it for inflation. Guess what? The IC705 sells for close to the same price, adjusted for inflation, that the FT817 did back in 2000. Well, that did it. I made the tough call to sell my FT891 and my FT897. I applied the funds towards the purchase of a brand new IC705. And that's how I got to where I am now. Will I regret the purchase? Or like my experience with the FT817, will it open new doors for me and help me build amazing memories of operating in the field? Time will tell. In the meantime, you can watch how the relationship goes as I feature the IC705 in my upcoming videos. That's all for this time. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you'd leave a super tip by clicking this button. Money donated will help me fund future videos. Thank you for watching. Now it's your turn. Get out of the shack, get outdoors, and get on the air. 7-3 from Tracy, VE3, TWM.